Hi witchlings, welcome back to my channel. It's me, your local chaotic witch on. I need water. Post haste. Oh. Mm. Oh, today we are doing a Portland haul. Portland haul. Just hands. I'm so excited. I have stacks of things behind me to share with you all, and I'm very excited. We're gonna, and actually, this is not just Portland Hall, this is also books that I got recently that I'm planning on reading. <laughs> I didn't get all of them here. Some are fiction, some are witchy. Um, but first, I wanna start off this video with a little announcement. If you don't know, I have a Patreon, um, and a, there is a new benefit that is coming to Patreon. Two new benefits that I'm very, very excited to announce. The first one is that if you subscribe to Tier 3 and Up, which is Hydra Side but Konica, you will now have access to unfiltered Chaotic Witch on book reviews. You, yes you, get to choose a book that I read for that month, and then I film a book review for just my Patreon, my completely honest review, my raw review. Um, there's, I talk about things I liked, the things I disliked, and I post it just for you guys. And like I said, you guys get to pick the book. This month's book, I believe, is The Divine Androgene by Hollis Taylor, that you will get my full opinion on it. And I will talk about sentences, parts of it that were good, parts that were eh. What is different from me doing kind of a book review online versus this is that when I am online, um, typically, if I don't like a book, I do not post it. If there is part of a book that is iffy, if the book is controversial, etc., if I feel like I cannot wholeheartedly recommend it to someone on my platform, I will not post it on my platform. That is kind of my rule for public book reviews for YouTube, for Instagram, etc. This way, there is more nuance, I can give more information, and ultimately, if you see my unfiltered book reviews, it's up to you as the reader whether you want to read it or not, and I am able to kind of look into more, I guess not controversial text, but more text that maybe I wouldn't wholeheartedly recommend to you. But at the end of the day, it's your choice. I also will be introducing workshops, workshops, eventually, hopefully by the end of June. If you are a Patreon member, book club, Pl Floridus Populinus tier and up, you get access to those workshops for free, for free, for what you're paying on Patreon tier. So that is workshops for $12 at the lowest, which is insane. These workshops are also going to be available in my shop on chaoticwitchon.com for people outside of the Patreon to buy and register for. Um, it will be more expensive than Patreon, but Patreon gets discounts. So if you're interested in that, that will be coming probably at the end of June. I will definitely do an announcement video. There are some technicalities that I need to work on. I also will be doing workshops with New Moon Books in Florida and Secret Apothecary in Portland in July and October. More information will be coming soon. So if you're interested in getting workshop access for $12 in the future, head over to my Patreon. Hit that tier. We also have a book club and weekly collective card polls and mentee sessions for $80 if you're interested. Mm. <laughs> I made a Patreon post talking about those workshops. The idea is end of June, but considering the amount of work it takes to do it, the idea is to get everything set up and have it as a benefit at the end of June and then mid-July have it listed or end of June have it listed on my shop for purchase and then have the class be near the end of July, mid to end of July. A few ideas have come forth in what kind of workshops I will be teaching, including Diana Epithets and Devotion, Protection Magic, Vanishing, some 101s, Money Magic, Ancestor Work, that would have a guest on with me, and so much more. These workshops will probably be every other month, not monthly, unless they are longer. But yeah, for right now I gotta get a state party to Call me back. But those are my updates for my YouTube channel. We are moving on to the stack. Ah These are the books that I got recently and what I'm planning on reading. There are a few others that I didn't include, but these are mostly from Powell's bookstore, which by the way, if you've never been to Powell's, you're missing out. It's so big. I love it. Um, this is, we have two current reads. I'm starting to read Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller. This is our book club book for the month. If you're interested in joining book club, it is on Patreon tier 
three Pluritus Populinus book club is Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller. I am starting this book as my witchy book. I'm also reading a lot of queer witchcraft books for a video coming next week. Stay tuned. Shout out to the gays. So starting off from Howells, I'm also reading this book right now. As you can see, I'm almost done. This is a horror book called A God in the Shed by J.F. Dubow. I'm a big horror fan. When I go looking for fiction, I usually go for horror, mystery, and thriller, and fantasy. High fantasy specifically, um, which is one of the books in the list. But this is the back. In the quaint farm village of St. Ferdinand, an ancient evil lurks, threatening to destroy the town and its residents. Sick. I love ancient evil. Ah, uh, so far, I'm almost done with this book. I'd rate it so far an eight out of 10. It is good, it is gripping, it keeps you reading. Is it the best horror book I've ever read? No. I am a hardcore Stephen Graham Jones fan. He wrote My Heart is a Chainsaw is his newest book. He also wrote The Only Good Indians. And both, uh, and I read The Only Good Indians and immediately fell in love. He is a Denver native, a Denver local. He is an indigenous author and he is amazing. When I read his book, when I say I was, I downed it in 48 hours, which is really rare for me, it usually takes me about a week. I downed it in 48 hours and it haunted me. It left me with a ghost of the novel. It was insane. It was gruesome. It was gory. It had everything you could possibly want in a horror book. Metaphors, identity crisis, a weird, a weird thing hunting people down. Amazing. I loved it. It was beautiful. And because uh, how much I love Stephen Graham Jones, I did pick up another Indigenous author. This is David Hasco won Blue Leaden. He, in this book, is Winter Counts. He is an enrolled citizen of the Sukangu Lakota Nation, and he has his MFA from the Institute of the American Indian Arts. He also lives in Denver, Colorado. I love Denver authors. But yeah, so this is another indigenous author who wrote a mystery and thriller, and because of that, I automatically picked it up because I'm like, I also picked up The Firekeeper's Daughter. I'm very excited. Uh, for that book. It is a mystery thriller and I will let you know what I think. This is a book that I did not get from Powell's but was recommended to me so many times. Chunk! It's a big chunky boy! This is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. It, when I was looking for like queer fantasy, this Giddy and Giddy in the Ninth came up. I also got The Bone Shard Daughter and The City of Brass. Um, but this was highlighted at Powell's. I ordered it beforehand from Thrift Books, but it was highlighted as pa at Powell's for Queer Fantasy next to Gideon the Ninth, and um, I think, and then She Became the Sun, which I did not get yet. But I'm very excited to read this. It is in my to read stack, which I have under my fun little circle table. I'm excited. I've heard really good things. Um, people straight up were like, this has everything. It is a whopping seven, eight hundred something pages. So this is gonna be like a month long read for my fiction, not a month read. This one I picked up from Powell's. I just got it because I liked the cover and it was in the mystery section. I know nothing about it. It's called Girls on Fire. In the back it says, three girls went into the woods, two came out. It sounds like a joke or a riddle, but it was only whatever after be the rest of our life love. I will let you know what I think of this. The last, this one is in my next book after A God in the Shed is Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. It is a kind of novel but mystery. Uh, Vogue said it was suspenseful, atmospheric, as much a mystery as an odyssey. I do believe this was a national bestseller. I have not read this book yet, but I did read Once There Were Wolves by the same author and absolutely loved it. I love the entanglement of nature and mystery. That is my all-time favorite genre when someone takes um, nature or the behaviors of animals like migrating birds or wolves and rehabilitation and puts it with someone's own emotional journey and mystery. I cry tears of joy. That is my favorite genre. So if you know a book like that, hit me up. I am reading this next. It is a little shorter 
been a Pirate Reef and Orange Tree, and I will be diving in. These last two are more witchy books. This one was not from Powell's, but I thought it was only fair that I picked up Aiden Rochter's new book, Changeling, a book of qualities. If you know me, you know that Aiden Wachter is one of my all-time favorite witchy authors. I will read anything he writes. I love it. I gobble it up. <laughs> Six Ways is one of my favorite witchy books ever, and I feel like Changeling is going to be the same. The spirit of Changeling has a heart full of poetry, a head full of witch logic, a twinkle in its eye, and a thick pair of boots. So Changeling, in turn, is the book. This is, There's a spirit in this book. In equal measure, it is both nuanced and discerning, conversational and instructive, playful and useful. It stands with an iron spire in between worlds and extends an open hand to any and all who might practice the craft. With welcome directness and infinite kindness, Changeling help us, helps us to deftly navigate the complexities of having a meaningful, meaningful and effective praxis and shows us in ways that are clear and immediately actionable what it really means to do the witch things. Changeling's charm is spoken through the pragmatic, good-humored, and gently encouraging voice of Aiden Walker, whose willingness to listen to his allies and share the coherent wisdom of his lived experience benefits all magical practitioners. It is a rare treasure for a book to be an ally, and that is what Changeling is. It walks beside us on the path and teaches us how to skillfully and seamlessly weave magic into the whole fabric of our life. And it does so by blessedly and unapologetically pointing at pointing us again and again to the responsibility and power held in our own hands. I'm screaming. The entire book is called, it start, every chapter is a witch blank blank. So a witch seeks power, a witch claims power, a witch shapes energy. Ah, I'm so excited. I love Aiden Walker. So maybe this will be my next review book for Patreon. Who knows? Um, and my final book that I got is a little bit less witchy, but it is A Gardener's Companion to Medicinal Plants by Royal Botanic Gardens. Cute, cute, cute. Uh, my favorite part of this book is it gives you instructions on how to make medicinal things. This is a fennel tincture and it gives you all the instructions with pictures. I am a big picture bitch. I love pictures telling me how to do things because I'm a very visual learner. Furthermore, this is what the rest of the book looks like. It's got illustrations to help you identify. For each one, it gives you the Latin name, an explanation of the plant, parts used, traditional uses, and medicinal discoveries. It'll help you look into uh, how to grow them, how to create tinctures, bonds, etc. with them. Um, it has many recipes, different plants, the world of medicinal plants, including growing medicinal plants, a history of herbals, traditional systems of medicine, herbalists today, weeds as medicine, plant compounds, drugs from plants, conservation, and trade. I am planting, planning, planting. I am planning on taking an herbalist course, and I felt like this was a really good companion book, as well as that a lot of the recipes in here are not using not using anything that doesn't have a long tradition of safe use. In fact, even in the beginning on page 11, it says the 24 remedies in this book have a long tradition of safe use. However, different people may react differently to a plant, so only use a small amount and only once when trying a plant for the first time. Also it talks about allergies, doses, and it is not a medical manual and is not intended as a guide to self-diagnosis and self-treatment. Anyways, I'm very excited to dive into that. That is, hold on, I gotta get everything back up here. Um, so second part of my Portland haul is what I got from Secret of Apothecary. If you don't know who Secret of Apothecary it is, they are a Portland-based apothecary. They hold classes. I'm doing a class with them in October. They have so many amazing things, including skincare, soaps, and more. Did I indulge? Yes. And I am happy I fucking did. I will link them in the comments. To get started, I'm going to start with what I got that is made by them. To start off, we have this pomegranate facial serum. That is it. Really gorgeous, some nice B-roll for my editor. Everyone say hi to Sally. Say, I love you, Sally. Thank you, Sally. Continuing on. I have been using this on my face twice a day, and I swear, my skin has never looked better. I think it's because it's magic. 
<laughs> so it has pomegranate, chamomile, sage, and geranium in it. I am going to be ordering some more facial stuff from them because I love this so much. It is a blend of jojoba, rosehip, pomegranate, argan oil, essential oil blend with chamomile, clary, sage, frankincense, and geranium. It is cruelty free and vegan. And this is what it says on the bottom. Pomegranate is the star of this serum. Not only is it anti-inflammatory and soothing, but it is also a way to usher in strength and transformation magically. This serum works to hydrate, soothe, and nourish while infusing your daily routine with powerful magic. Best for combination and dry skin. I have combination skin and I'm in a very dry climate. So this is amazing. I use this with my normal face wash. I use um, rose water and a preparation toner by Claire's. And I finish off my routine with a little uh, first aid beauty moisturizer. It's got collagenic oatmeal in it. I love it. I have been using this since I got back from Portland for two weeks and this is my skin. I'm not wearing any makeup, all right? I do have a little pimple here that is dried out, but I am very proud. I love it. I also use Curology at night, but I think my skin has overall gotten more hydrated and looks a lot better since I started using this. And because of that, I will wholeheartedly recommend it to you, especially if you're not allergic to anything. Um, I'm gonna be ordering more of it because it's become an essential part of my routine. I love it. It feels great. Amazing. Three other things. I got three other things. Actually, five other things from Secret that they made. This is their, I got their Birth of Venus soap. It is not in this container. This is just the container for it. This is their botanical soap called the Birth of Venus. It has cypress, juniper, and clary sage in it. I, ah, I wish you could smell it. It's all so good. I love their soaps. They have so many different kinds. They have ones for more, people with more sensitive skin. This one is a, as a indigo powder. Um, magically holds space for divine connection. Black lava salt dispels negativity negative energy and provides a gentle exfoliation. The essential oil blend is a formulation of strength and trust in your own truth. Hints of grounding cypress and cedarwood, sweet cysts, delicate fairy sage, and earthy salt. Birth of Venus, I saw a review and they said this soap is amazing, so I got it. Um, it's currently in my shower and I need to order more because I'm like halfway through already. I've been using it every time I shower. When I say that I think magical skincare products are the best way to go, my life has been great. I've been having a lot of good shit happen. And I use this so not only on my body in the shower, but I use it as an uncrossing. So I will recite a prayer while doing it. And it's a nice little cleansing, especially with that black lava salt. I also love, I love juniper, I love clary sage, and I love cypress. Those are things that I use very often in my, in my practice to bring in abundance, to dispel negativity. Overall, Birth of Venus, a great soap. I am gonna get more of their soaps to try out. So if we want a soap haul, if you guys want just a straight up Seagrave apothecary haul, I will do that because I love their shit so much. Next, I got two of their essential oil perfumes. This one is very oily because it was open and I used it earlier today. I got Loris, there we go, and I got their Woods perfume. I love both of these so much. Both of them are created with different scent notes. Loris is energizing, balancing, clean with garden herbs and bright citrus, and Woods doesn't have the scent notes on it. But it is like moss <laughs> and woods. It smells just like that. This one is for protection and grounding, and this one is kind of for energizing and moving forward. I have so much oil in my hands that I need to get off. Please excuse me for one second. Definitely smells bright and clean. I love it. It smells delicious. I've been using them every day for when Loris is for when I need to get work done, where I want things to succeed, and Woods has been for when I need some extra protection and grounding. Um, I, they have so many different essential oil perfumes. They have an Eclipse one. Um, all of them are delicious. I only picked up two because I have limited space coming back from Portland, and as you can imagine, this fucking book stack took up a lot of it. The last things I got from Seagrave, I believe these are by other vendors, but I'm not sure, were some earrings. I also got literature, which I'll go over next, some earrings. These are snake earrings. I don't know if you can see, but they have like these beautiful patterns on them. And I am absolutely in love with them. They are very hearty, very delicate, but I love these. So those are one of my favorites. And these are, I think, my favorite earrings that I've ever gotten. And they are these hoops. Wait, I'm missing a hoop. So this is how the hoops close. So they close with these little things here. 
So you have to be careful not to get this so this doesn't come off. So I'm gonna stick this back in and I'll show you how to close it. You just, boop. But these are my some of my favorite earrings. They're the golden hoops and they have naked women or non-women, naked people with butts. They're my butt earrings and I love butts. They also have multiple different types of these earrings for uh, different body sizes, different shapes. I got these, um, but they have ones with boobs on them too for like front figure. Um, I love these earrings so much. I wear them very frequently, very frequently. Um, today I'm wearing my Etta Love earrings, which thank you so much, I love. They are the Bramble, I believe they're called. They got a little uh, Christy face on it. And I love Etta Love. I got the book, The Scent of Lemon and Rosemary by Rachel Henderson, Working Domestic Magic with Hestia. I am very excited. It looks like there's a section of magical houseplants. Um, it looks very much like a book I would enjoy as a folk witch. Even if you don't work with Hestia, I still feel like you could get something out of this book, including uh, it talks about the home, making magic, the threshold, the kitchen, the living room, the bedroom, the bathroom, breaking bread, cleaning, and creating your own meal of the year, modern values. I'm very excited um, to read this. I'm so excited. That is the end of this video. If you want, you can like, comment, turn the bell on, subscribe, anything you want. Uh, but no pressure. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Slava Navika.